Chapter 14 of the 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines is on hypoglycemia. My name is Alice Chang and I am narrating this deck on behalf of the chapter authors Jean-Francois Yale, Ray Patey, and Peter Seymour. Key changes in the hypoglycemia chapter include reinforcement of the importance of counseling individuals on insulin or insulin secretagogues and their support persons on the risk, prevention, recognition, and treatment of hypoglycemia. In addition, there is new information on strategies to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia. The hypoglycemia checklist is as follows. Recognize hypoglycemia and confirm. Differentiate mild to moderate versus severe. Treat hypoglycemia but avoid overtreatment. And avoid hypoglycemia in the future. The definition of hypoglycemia is as follows. First, there is development of neurogenic or neuroglycopenic symptoms. Neurogenic symptoms are the same kind of symptoms that one experiences when nervous or scared, and these include trembling, palpitation, sweating, anxiety, hunger, or nausea. And then neuroglycopenic symptoms are symptoms that are more specific to low blood sugar, given that they represent lack of blood sugar to the brain. So these symptoms include difficulty concentrating, confusion, weakness, drowsiness, vision changes, difficulty speaking, or dizziness. In addition to neurogenic or neuroglycopenic symptoms, there needs to be a low blood glucose, defined as less than 4 millimoles per liter if the patient is on insulin or secretagogue. And finally, there needs to be a response to carbohydrate load. So all three parameters do need to be present in order to make the call that the individual is experiencing hypoglycemia. The severity of hypoglycemia can be categorized as mild, moderate, or severe. Mild hypoglycemia is autonomic symptoms being present, but the individual is still able to self-treat. In the case of moderate hypoglycemia, Autonomic and neuroglycopenic symptoms are present, but the individual is still able to self-treat. However, severe hypoglycemia represents requiring the assistance of another person or if there is unconsciousness, and typically the plasma glucose is much lower at less than 2.8. Risk factors for severe hypoglycemia in people treated with sulfonylureas or insulin include prior episode of severe hypoglycemia, current low A1C, hypoglycemia unawareness, long duration of insulin therapy, autonomic neuropathy, chronic kidney disease, low economic status or food insecurity, low health literacy, preschool age children unable to detect and or treat mild hypoglycemia on their own, adolescents, pregnancy, elderly, and cognitive impairment. Drug-induced hypoglycemia can result in significant morbidity and mortality and serious obstacle to meet glycemic targets because hypoglycemia causes people to be afraid and therefore they're more likely to back off on their glycemic control. We must counsel patients who drive on insulin or secretagogues regarding the importance of SMBG and taking appropriate precautions. And I would encourage you to visit the diabetes and driving chapter in order to learn more. So what steps should one take when addressing hypoglycemia? So step one is recognizing the autonomic or neuroglycopenic symptoms, then confirming the presence of hypoglycemia, confirming a blood glucose less than four. Then treatment should take place with fast sugar or simple carbohydrates of 15 grams to relieve symptoms followed by a retest in 15 minutes to ensure the blood glucose has come up over four and retreat if necessary. And then finally, eating a usual snack or meal at time of day with a carbohydrate plus protein. I would personally add more to these steps and step number six would be reflection to determine why this occurred in the first place and what changes can I make to avoid it from happening. Examples of 15 grams of simple carbohydrate include 15 grams of glucose in the form of glucose tablets, 
15 milliliters or three packets of sugar dissolved in water, 150 ml of juice or regular soft drink, six lifesavers, or 15 milliliters or one tablespoon of honey. Now, in the case of severe hypoglycemia in an unconscious person with no intravenous access, treatment with one milligram of glucagon subcutaneously or intramuscularly would be helpful, followed by calling 911 and, of course, discussing the event with the diabetes healthcare team. Treatment of severe hypoglycemia in an unconscious person who does have intravenous access should include 10 to 25 grams of glucose intravenously over one to three minutes. This was equal to 20 to 50 ml of D50W. Retesting should then occur in 15 minutes to ensure the blood glucose has come up over four and if necessary, retreat with a further 15 grams of carbohydrate. And once conscious, the patient should eat usual snack or meal due at that time or a snack with 15 gram carbohydrate plus protein. Treatment of severe hypoglycemia in a conscious person is different. They should be treated with oral fast sugar. However, the amount should be 20 grams in order to relieve symptoms. Then a retest should be done in 15 minutes to ensure the blood glucose has come up and retreatment should be instituted if necessary. And then finally, eating the usual snack or meal due at that time of day or a snack with 15 grams of carbohydrate plus protein would also be appropriate. Recommendations 1 and 2. All people with diabetes currently using or starting therapy with insulin or insulin secretagogues and their support persons should be counseled about the risk, prevention, recognition, and treatment of hypoglycemia. Risk factors for severe hypoglycemia should be identified and addressed. The diabetes healthcare team should review the person with diabetes experience with hypoglycemia at each visit including an estimate of cause, frequency, symptoms, recognition, severity and treatment, as well as the risk of driving with hypoglycemia. Recommendation three. In people with diabetes at increased risk of hypoglycemia, the following strategies may be used to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia. First, avoidance of pharmacotherapies associated with increased risk of recurrent or severe hypoglycemia. Second, a standardized education program targeting rigorous avoidance of hypoglycemia while maintaining overall glycemic control. Third, increased frequency of self-monitoring of blood glucose, including periodic assessment during sleeping hours. Fourth, less stringent glycemic targets with avoidance of hypoglycemia for up to three months. Fifth, a psychobehavioral intervention program or blood glucose awareness training. And finally, structured diabetes education and frequent follow-up. Recommendation four. In people with diabetes with recurrent or severe hypoglycemia or impaired awareness of hypoglycemia, the following strategies may be considered to reduce or eliminate the risk of severe hypoglycemia and to attempt to regain hypoglycemia awareness. Less stringent glycemic targets with avoidance of hypoglycemia for up to three months continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion, or continuous glucose monitoring, or sensor augmented pump with education and follow-up for type 1 diabetes, islet transplantation for type 1 diabetes, or pancreas transplantation for type 1 diabetes. Recommendation 5. Mild to moderate hypoglycemia should be treated by the oral ingestion of 15 grams of carbohydrate preferably as glucose or sucrose tablets or solution. These are preferable to orange juice and glucose gels. People with diabetes should retest blood glucose in 15 minutes and retreat with another 15 gram carbohydrate if the blood glucose level remains less than four. Please note that this does not apply to children. In the case of children, please refer to the type one diabetes in children and adolescents and the type two diabetes in children and adolescents chapters. Recommendation six, severe hypoglycemia in a conscious person with diabetes should be treated by oral ingestion of 20 grams of carbohydrate, preferably as glucose tablets or equivalent. 
Blood glucose should be retested in 15 minutes and then retreated with another 15 grams of glucose if the blood glucose remains below 4. Recommendation 7. Severe hypoglycemia in an unconscious individual with diabetes with no intravenous access should receive 1 mg of glucagon subcutaneously or intramuscularly. Caregivers or support persons should call for emergency services and the episode should be discussed with the diabetes health care team as soon as possible. If they have intravenous access, then 10 to 25 grams of glucose should be given intravenously over 1 to 3 minutes. This translates into 20 to 50 mLs of D50W. Recommendation 8. Once the hypoglycemia has been reversed, the person should have the usual meal or snack that is due at that time of day to prevent repeated hypoglycemia. If a meal is more than in one hour away, a snack including 15 grams of carbohydrate and a protein source should be consumed. Recommendation 9. For individuals with diabetes at risk of severe hypoglycemia, support persons should be taught how to administer glucagon. Key messages from this chapter include, it is important to prevent, recognize, and treat hypoglycemic episodes secondary to the use of insulin or insulin secretagogues. It is safer and more effective to prevent hypoglycemia than to treat it after it occurs. So people with diabetes who are at high risk for hypoglycemia should be identified and counseled about ways to prevent low blood glucose. It is important to counsel individuals who are at risk of hypoglycemia and their support persons about the recognition and treatment of hypoglycemia. The goals of treatment for hypoglycemia are to detect and treat a low blood glucose level promptly by using an intervention that provides the fastest rise in blood glucose to a safe level to eliminate the risk of injury and to relieve symptoms quickly. Once the hypoglycemia has been reversed, the person should have the usual meal or snack that is due at that time of day to prevent repeated hypoglycemia. If a meal is greater than one hour away, a snack, including 15 grams of carbohydrate and a protein source, should be consumed. It is important to avoid overtreatment of hypoglycemia since this can result in rebound hyperglycemia and weight gain. Key messages for people living with diabetes. Know the signs and symptoms of a low blood glucose level. Some of the more common symptoms of low blood glucose are trembling, sweating, anxiety, confusion, difficulty concentrating, or nausea. Not all symptoms will be present, and some individuals may have other symptoms. Carry a source of fast-acting carbohydrate with you at all times, such as glucose tablets, lifesavers, and or a juice box. Wear diabetes identification, for example, a medical or bracelet, and talk with your diabetes healthcare team about prevention and emergency treatment of a severe low blood glucose level associated with confusion, loss of consciousness, or seizure. Thank you very much for your attention. And again, for more information about the guidelines or to access more details on this chapter, please visit guidelines.diabetes.ca. In addition, please download the app from Google Play or the App Store. Thank you again for your attention.